Alright folks, so I just want to do a quick video on ham radio repeaters, what they are, who uses them, and why you'd want to use one. It's a question I get a lot on my channel, mostly from newer hams or people looking to get into the hobby. So I decided to just put a quick video together and then uh, that way we can all be on the same page. So stay tuned. So here's a definition that I pulled off of uh, Wikipedia, and I'll put the link below. And it really answers the question around, what is a repeater? So in telecommunications, or radio, a repeater is an electronic device that receives a signal and retransmits it. Repeaters are used to extend transmissions, so that the signal can cover a longer distance or be received on the other side of an obstruction. Some types of repeaters broadcast an identical signal, but alter its method of transmission. So, for example, on another frequency or baud rate. And so that's exactly what a repeater does. It allows people to extend their communications to friends, family, uh, other people who have similar interests, or people who need to communicate for whatever reason. So let's talk a little bit about who uses a repeater. Repeaters are kind of big pieces of equipment. Uh, they can be, anyway. Uh, they're generally pretty expensive for a nice repeater. So what you see is a ham radio clubs. So that's a local community of hams. They'll meet at a regular interval, usually monthly. Um, they'll pull their resources together via dues, via some sort of drive. Um, they'll collect some money, buy equipment, and work together to set up a, a repeater system. And they do this so that way they can communicate with each other and share their hobby locally. Also, people will use them for special events, and uh, when I talk about special events, maybe there's a bicycle race, or maybe there is a marathon being run in your local area. And uh, ham radio operators will generally volunteer to help support those, maybe run a first aid booth. Um, I know that locally we have a bike race, and uh, if somebody has an accident or uh, maybe checkpoints, uh, will be manned by uh, ham volunteers, and they'll use their local repeater to do that. Also, there's a thing called a net. Um, you'll have local and regional nets. Um, they could be a traffic net where people pass information back and forth. Um, locally here, we have a net every morning that is um, really more around the rush hour traffic. And people get on there and they'll say, hey, avoid this route or avoid this, uh, this interstate. And just kind of pass information, shoot the breeze, talk a little bit about their radios and maybe their latest doctor appointment. Also, they tend to be used a lot in emergency communications. So again, we have a, a very nice repeater locally that is part of the Skywarn network, and uh, it will give alerts or broadcasts around um, deteriorating uh, weather conditions and stuff like that. Um, also, Aries might run a net, uh, or Racy's might run a net, to talk a little bit about. Um, they'll do them typically just to practice, but the, in the event of an emergency situation, they'll take over the repeaters. Also, local operators. So these are just hams that uh, live locally to repeaters. Uh, they'll get on there and they'll rag chew, talk to each other, uh, talk about the weather, talk, again, talk about the radios or doctor's appointments, um, just to make contacts, uh, get to know each other, and uh, share the hobby. So why would you use a repeater? Let's just say that uh, you and your buddy run out and you buy some brand new Bofeng uh, handheld ham radios, and you want to talk to each other. Uh, these radios, mobile radios that are in your, uh, in your car, your vehicle, maybe a small radio in your ham shack, these are generally limited to what is called line of sight communications. And in a nutshell, that means that your radios need to really be able to see each other. Uh, UHF and VHF, granted, there are repeaters that extend beyond that, uh, generally um, don't uh, reflect off the atmosphere. They, they, uh, they really propagate via a mechanism called line of sight. And then what people will do is they'll mount a little bit of a bigger antenna, try to get their antenna as high up in the air as they can, and that will help them extend their range. But uh, in a lot of cases, you have things like topography, um, geography, and, uh, and physical structures that impede or get in the way of line of sight. And that limits the range of uh, you and your buddy's brand new Baofeng handheld radios. So let's take a little bit of a more in-depth uh, look at what is line of sight. Um, and so it's a propagation characteristic of electromagnetic radiation. That sounds pretty fancy. Uh, it says, or acoustic wave propagation, which means waves travel in direct path from source to receiver. And that's what I mean by radios need to see each other. Electromagnetic transmissions include light emissions traveling in a straight line. The rays or waves may be diffracted, refracted, reflected or absorbed by the atmosphere or obstructions with material. And generally cannot travel over the horizon or behind obstacles. Again, this is a definition that I pulled off of Wikipedia, and I'll include this link below so you can get more information. So just a quick note, 
Um, as I mentioned, most amateur ham radio repeaters operate on what's called U, uh, VHF 2 meter and uh, UHF or 70 centimeter bands. You do see repeaters that operate on 10 meter and 6 meter, but uh, it's much less frequent. Uh, repeaters can be FM analog. In fact, the bulk of them are. But we're starting to see more and more digital modes, such as a DMR repeater, which is a digital mobile radio. D-Star, which is uh, generally used by ICOM radios. I believe there's a Kenwood or two out there that support D-Star. And then a Yaesu Systems Fusion, which is uh, all Yaesu mode. So let's get back to talking about why you would use a repeater. And uh, we talked a little bit about geography and topography. And then uh, maybe you're one of the people who believe that the Earth is uh, round and not flat. And so what this means is, is that the further you get away from your buddy, the more the curvature of the Earth plays a factor. So what they say is, is that the Earth curves at about 8 inches a mile. People will say it's 6 inches. Some people will say it's 10 inches. Um, and then the range that you get on these uh, mobile radios generally is uh, just a few miles. People will say, oh, it's 2 miles, 4 miles, 10 miles. Uh, but one of the things that does greatly impact that is the height of your antenna versus the, uh, the curvature of the earth. And what that curvature does is it breaks that line of sight. All right, now maybe you uh, are one of these flat earth people who don't believe in things like uh, the curve of the earth. So another reason that you may want to use a repeater, uh, we spoke about this earlier, is obstructions. So buildings, trees, houses, school buses, uh, cars, and even little tiny mopeds can get in the way, block, reflect, or absorb transmissions. And so this really is a good example of why you'd want to use a repeater. So in this picture, what you can see is, is that uh, people generally mount their repeater antennas as high as they can. They'll put them on top of a tower, they'll put them on top of a building, they'll put them on top of a mountain, maybe even a, a tower on the top of the mountain. And really what that does is it changes your line of sight from your radio to the repeater antenna. And because that antenna is elevated, your signal can go much further. Obstructions and the curve of the earth do not impact your line of sight at this point. Or what they'll do is they'll extend it a much, much further range. Um, you know, I've talked on repeaters with a hand, handheld walkie-talkie type uh, radio at 50 miles before. Uh, not always. That's a little bit of an extreme case, but, it, but I've done it. Um, and lots of other people have as well. So um, that's kind of the reasons why you'd want to use a repeater or leverage a repeater. It really allows many more hams in a geographic region to communicate much more easily. So let's talk about how repeaters work. And there are two things that you really need to concern yourself with. Um, one is the downlink. That is the signal coming from the repeater to your radio. And that is going to be your RX frequency or your receive frequency. And then the uplink, and that is the signal from your radio to the repeater so it can be rebroadcast. And that is your TX or transmission uh, frequency. So uplink and downlink are typically different frequency. The old, you'll up on one, you'll down on another one. Um, and then the distance uh, from a megahertz or from a, from a bandwidth perspective is referred to as an offset. And generally the offset is a standard value. For example, on the 2 meter band, it's 0.6 megahertz and it's 5 megs on the uh, 70 centimeter band. Now, you may come across repeaters that don't have standard offsets. Uh, some people may just set up a repeater in their backyard and be done with it. But uh, most repeaters, uh, and maybe most isn't the right word, but uh, generally uh, repeaters are coordinated by a frequency coordinator in your local or state area. So repeaters generally uh, will use something called a squelch tone. And uh, again, I went to Wikipedia for some information, and I'll include a link that uh, will give you more information below. But essentially, it's a secondary tone that's transmitted with your signal. These tones are sub-auditable, so you can not hear them. Repeaters and radios uh, will be configured on their receive frequency, their RX, uh, with a squelch tone that only allows you to hear transmissions that include that squelch tone. So if your RX frequency configuration on your radio includes a squelch tone, you're only going to hear other folks that have that same squelch tone programmed into their TX frequency. Now some repeaters will require squelch tones on both the uplink and downlink. And sometimes you'll see them referred to as a PL tone or a private line tone. Or you even hear people call them a party line tone. 
Now, uh, some tone types, you would have your CTCSS, which is your Continuous Tone Coded Squelch System. Uh, you'll also see DCS, which is a Digital uh, Coded Squelch System. Sometimes you'll see a radio say, uh, C, or sorry, a repeater say CSQ, um, which is Carrier Squelch, which means that there is no secondary tone. And then sometimes on, uh, on DMR repeaters, you'll see color codes. You'll say color code 1, color code 2, and uh, people get confused by that, but that's just a fancy way of identifying a squelch tone. So people say, well, geez, Ape, this all sounds pretty, uh, pretty complicated, and how do I get repeater info and find out what the frequencies are and if there is a tone or not? And, and I use repeater book, and you can search uh, by call sign, you can search by geography, and here you can see uh, Pensacola repeater. You can see the downlink and uplink. It identifies the offset value, and then you can see CSQ, which means that there is no um, a squelch tone. It's the it's the carrier squelch tone, and it has the call uh, the uh, call sign. Here's a here's another uh, repeater that I pulled up on Repeater Book in Orlando, Florida. And the reason I wanted to show this one is it does show separate uh, uplink and downlink tones, and uh, you can see them right here. And that's that is a secondary frequency, um, as we talked about. Anyhow, Repeater Book is fantastic for uh, getting repeater information, and you can even export uh, uh, repeater information into Excel spreadsheets that you can load into your radio. I do have some videos on how to program your different radios for repeater usage, but I'm not going to cover it here because of the vast variety of radios out there. Another uh, neat thing that uh, you see when you're using repeaters is, is that there's a concept of something called a linked repeater, and this even allows you to extend your geography even further. And uh, what a linked repeater is, it's basically a network of repeaters. It can be two, it can be 10, it could be 50. And uh, these are linked either via RF or over the internet. So a repeater may broadcast a signal over the airwaves, another repeater hears that and rebroadcasts it. And it allows you and your buddy to talk a little bit further away than you could if you were using a single repeater. Also, there's lots of ways that repeaters can be linked over um, internet. Echo link, um, internet relay, uh, digital uh, modes such as uh, Yesu, use a, use a protocol called WiresX, DMR and DSTAR all have their own backbones or networks for digitally linking repeaters. And uh, when you do that, you can actually communicate on your hand ta handy talkie, provided it supports digital modes, to people all over the globe. Uh, it's pretty neat and it's a fun thing to do. So that kind of wraps up what I wanted to cover in this video. Hopefully that makes uh, the concept of repeaters and understanding them a little bit easier for everybody. If you have questions, you can go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to try to answer them. If you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up or share, um, or you can even subscribe. I appreciate everybody watching. Thank you very much.